Hi everyone, my name's Sam and a big hello to everyone at Budbrook School. Uh, Miss List and Mr McKee have very kindly organised for me to give you a virtual visit. So um, a big hello from me. I'm looking forward to reading you my book, uh, Don't Look In This Book, which I've been told you've been doing a lot of work around um, and you might have your own copy as well. So I'm really excited to read your story. And before I start, I've got some shout outs to do. Um, I'd love to say a big hi to uh, Mrs. Thomas and Mrs. Hallam and everyone in Pine class. Um, everyone in Elm class with Miss Carol. Year one and year two uh, Beach class, Mr. Bre Bre Brereton. Uh, year three and four Chestnut, Miss Osborne. Year three and four again Holly class with Miss Fletcher. Miss Woods and Mrs. Smith Cherry class and Miss List finally in Apple class. So big hello to everyone. I'm sorry I can't see you in person but I'm hoping that you'll enjoy this video um, and let's get started with our story. So this is Don't Look In This Book. Don't look in this book. I was talking to you. Yes, you right there. You shouldn't have looked inside. Don't read on. Don't you dare. If you do, you'll be puzzled and left scratching your head as to why wacky wizards battle under your bed. You'll stumble across the story of the superhero race to see who'd fly their dino rocket the fastest into space. You'll be standing among soldiers at the bottom of the ocean to guard a special shipwreck that contains a magic potion. You'll be amazed by aliens flying down from the skies, saving cities from a unicorn with laser beam eyes. You'll untangle how tigers turned up on a train, travelling in tunnels, driving everyone insane. You'll search with secret agents looking out for every clue, in smelly underground sewers, watching out for all the poo. You'll be itching to find those crafty creatures in the wood, trying to hide among the animals in any way they could. You'll wish you knew why whales and narwhals go by, swimming softly in moonlight across the silky night sky. You'll learn about the troop of arctic ninjas in the snow, fighting giant icy spiders using moves that they all know. You'll imagine mighty monsters turn your whole house upside down. Would it make you laugh and smile, or would it make you want to frown? Now you've found all of these stories, you'll wonder how they end. Well, that's the most exciting part. It's down to you, my friend. These stories are yours to talk about, draw, or even write. So fire up your imagination, you're in for a ride. Hold tight. I hope you enjoyed that story and I hope that it will inspire you to create your own stories too. And Miss List has asked me to think about and talk about some of the themes within the book. Um, so in order to create a story, I'd like you to choose your favourite page and create a story of your very own. And some of the things you could think about are rhyming words. So in this page, for example, we've got train and insane. And in this page, we've got uh, upside down and frown. So can you think about rhyming words that go together that might join into a really exciting story? The other idea is to find uh, a really unusual setting. So the place where the story happens, uh, can you find somewhere unusual for it to happen, like the bottom of the ocean or um, in space, for example? And then thinking about things that might seem a bit funny as well. So monsters shaking a house upside down or um, smelly underground sewers with poo in them. Will you make your story funny? Um, and also thinking about alliteration as well. So this uh, piece of writing is really good for alliteration. So you'll untangle how tigers turned up on a train. So lots of T sounds, T sounds. Um, so have a think about alliteration as well. And then think about whether you might uh, do something unexpected. So in a lot of stories, unicorns are really cute and fluffy and sweet. But in this story, uh, we made them a baddie with laser beam eyes. So have a think about the different types of things you can do to make your story really exciting by starting with just one of these parts of the stories from Don't Look In This Book. Right, and before I say goodbye, um, I've actually got some questions from you guys as well. Um, so what inspired you to start writing? Um, I actually was inspired to start writing when I became a dad. So um, 
I adopted my two children and as soon as I met them I was so inspired by the journeys that they faced and the challenges that they faced that um, it inspired me to write stories and I wrote my first story um, for Christmas actually as a little Christmas present to them and that was called Santa's Wish, you might have seen it before, um, if not it's a really great story that encourages kindness at Christmas. Um, how long does it take to start writing a book? Um, sometimes you can write a book really quickly, uh, but the main thing that's important is editing. So some of you might be doing purple pen or coloured pen to edit your work. Um, it can take a few hours to write a story, but it actually takes a few weeks to do all of that editing and purple penning, which is really, really important. Uh, where do you get your information and inspiration from in writing books? Well, sometimes I have ideas in my head um, that I just think about when I'm feeling a bit imaginative. I sort of sit and think what might be fun to put in a book. And other times I will listen to things that is going on around me. So a lot of ideas or things that I see and hear that I think are really funny and interesting to put into stories. And how can I create a story that will make... Uh, something positive happen at the end of the story so how can that book do good is really important to me. Um, how do you come up with the titles of your books? Sometimes the titles start uh, right at the beginning I'll come up with the title first so uh, another one of my books called What Wesley Wore um, I came up with the title straight away because I love the alliteration of the W and then I wrote the story and other times you just start with parts of stories little notes um, and then when the story's finished, you then realise what it's going to be called. So um, sometimes it happens at the start, sometimes it happens at the end. Um, how many books have you written and which is your favourite? Um, so I've written quite a lot of books. I think I'm on about seven or eight at the moment. Um, some of my recent ones is um, a Tooth Fairy series, which is really exciting if any of you are losing your teeth. Um, and I've also written a book which is my favourite book called The Blanket Beers which talks a little bit about adoption and how my children join me and my family uh, but it's more about these two blanket beers, it's told through their story which is really exciting. Um, and I also have my own publishing company so I help to um, support authors and help other people write their stories too um, and that company is called Outlet Press and here are two more books from Outlet Press uh, called Marnie's Mix-Up and Omar the Bees and Me, which is a really good book for springtime and learning all about wildflowers and bees. Um, do you have any suggestions to help us become better readers and writers? If so, what are they? So I would say um, read all the time and read lots of different things. So read books, magazines, um, articles on the internet, read newspapers, read signs, um, and listen to all different language uh, that's used in those things. You know, people talk differently in signs and newspapers to they do in storybooks. So just read everything that you can. Um, and in terms of being a better writer, I would say listen to uh, what your teacher is saying, whether your teacher is um, helping you with your spelling or your punctuation or telling you where you can improve um, or helping you edit and bring more life to your story. I think listen to the feedback is really, really important for me as an author and will help you become a better writer. Um, how do you handle writer's block? I find writer's block really challenging. Um, writer's block is when you're not sure what to write. Um, and sometimes it's better just to write little trickles of things. It can be really tricky just having a blank page in front of you. So it's always good just to start. Just to start, even if you're going up throwing those pieces of work to one side, just keep writing and keep writing little on and off in little bits to try and tackle that writer's block. Uh, my favourite children's author, who's your favourite children's author was the question. Um, I like the way that Julia Donaldson rhymes um, and I also used to really like The Hobbit when I was younger. The Hobbit was my favourite book. Um, so yeah, that's The Hobbit is a really great book. If any of you um, get the chance to read it, some of you might have seen the film, but it's a really great story. Um, and that's it from me. It's been really great to uh, meet you virtually. I hope that you are inspired by this video and I can't wait to see the stories that you create from Donut in this book. Take care. Bye bye.